American political, American professor and author Stephen Zunas. Uh, Dr. Zunis is a professor of politics and international studies at the University of San Francisco, where he served as founding director of the program on Middle East studies. He's one of the foremost scholars of nonviolent civil resistance and has published groundbreaking research on popular resistance to coups. Uh, <clears throat> here in the United States, there's a very real risk that through various methods, the um, uh, Republicans could effectively try to steal the 2020 presidential election and that the Republican dominated courts would be willing to allow it to happen. Aware of this possibility, a growing number of organizations is organizing for large scale civil resistance uh, to defend American democracy in the face of possible efforts to thwart the democratic will after election day. And fortunately, there is precedent we can learn from. Uh, there have been three cases in recent decades, one in Southeast Asia, two in Eastern Europe, in which an incumbent president or party attempted to steal an election only to have it reversed through large-scale nonviolent direct action. Uh, we've already heard about two of these, the Philippines in 1986 and Serbia in 2000. The third case is uh, Ukraine in 2004. And in, in looking at these uh, uprisings, the, the, um, the, the, the thing that these three uprisings have in common that I think those of us in the United States can learn from uh, are, the, uh, are the following. Um, uh, meticulous uh, election monitoring and uh, related, which enabled the um, just disappear. Yep, your slide disappeared, Stephen. Strange. Okay, let's try it. Um, there you go. It's back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> disappeared. It must just be something quirky with the slideshow view. So okay, we but anyway. Uh, meticulous election monitoring and related efforts which enabled the opposition to make a convincing case that there was indeed fraud and there had not been a full and accurate count of the vote. Second was the mobilization within days that it became apparent that there were efforts underway to steal the election. Again, this was important to, to be uh, timely, <laughs> to, to be, be quick uh, before, the, uh, uh, before the incumbent regime consolidates power. A third is large-scale non-cooperation, uh, challenging the legitimacy of the incumbent government, including popular contestation of public space, you know, like a main square in the Capitol or other areas of uh, strategic uh, importance. Um, fourth, of course, is strict uh, non-violent discipline by the opposition, even in the face of violent repression. And of course, this is critical for all sorts of, uh, of, of obvious um, uh, reasons, especially for regimes who want to uh, maintain the image of trying to uphold law and order. And finally, the uprising having support of both the centrist political grouping whose candidates had been robbed of victory, as well as grassroots elements of civil society uh, to their left. Uh, and so again, uh, while we um, here in the United States, we not um, may not be ter terribly excited about Biden, the importance of, uh, of, of, of uh, defending uh, the uh, 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 democracy uh, again, uh, against uh, you know, Trump and all he represents is critical. But similarly, it's, it's important that, um, that the uh, uh, mainstream opposition be willing to uh, accept and endorse uh, extra legal <laughs> efforts. And, well, well, could Americans do that in this kind of sense? I mean, on one hand, we have a longer and stronger democratic tradition than most countries, as well as an impressive history of nonviolent resistance. But there are a number of ways that uh, mobilizing successful mass resistance could be more challenging than in the Filipino, Serbian, or Ukrainian cases. One is that the um, um, in the Philippines, Serbia, and Ukraine, like most countries with presidential systems, the candidate who receives the majority of votes is the winner. With the US president selected by the Electoral College and with a number of other obscure uh, constitutional provisions that could come into effect in case of dispute uh, in terms of the seating of electors, it could make it so that uh, Trump could legally 
be declared the winner, uh, despite losing the popular vote by a large um, margin. In that case, would somebody cautious like Biden and the Democratic establishment uh, be willing to endorse a massive extra legal campaign? You know, could a movement succeed if they were told essentially to give up? Um, now, if, if a major resistance campaign was launched anyway, would we be able to convince the establishment to join it? Um, and these, these are some of the questions that we need to think of. of. Another issue is that unlike uh, 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 th these countries, you have tens of millions of uh, Trump supporters, very right wing, who have guns. <laughs> I mean, not just guns, but semi-automatic weapons that they, in most states are legally allowed to carry around and threaten people with. And even if we were to um, assume that most regular police and military would not shoot into um, crowds of peaceful demonstrators, uh, you can't, uh, it, it, it's less um, uh, you know, likely that uh, these uh, right wing militia you know, could have, uh, would uh, have such hesitation. Um, another thing, uh, is, but one area where, where direct action could start uh, before you know, the um, election is in terms of uh, in person voting. Uh, Trump has called for armed supporters, patrol, polling stations, and heavily Democratic precincts. Um, and, and so uh, voters who may be intimidated, especially minority voters, um, faced with all these white guys with guns, which could be a little triggering, as you might imagine. Uh, it would be good if, we, if, uh, if movement activists could, could engage in unarmed accompaniment of the voters um, and you know, to, the, to the actual polling stations. Um, and we, there needs to be plans for specific kinds of mobilizations, including blocking and occupying key governmental, commercial, uh, transport, and other facilities. Um, you know, such mass actions are important as they uh, galvanize the opposition, encourage uh, participation, uh, prevent business as usual in critical urban centers, and provide excellent footage um, uh, for sympathetic news coverage. At the same time, seizure of a particular physical space should not be overemphasized. I mean, for example, in the Philippine case, pro-democracy protesters do not need to seize uh, um, the presidential palace. They just made it so that the presidential palace was essentially the only part of the Philippines Marcos controlled. You know, so while physically occupying a government building or an important geographical center can have some symbolic advantages, what is important is defending the constitutional system, not a particular building or public square. And the defense of society under threat of a de facto coup relies on widespread mobilization, of building alliances, nonviolent discipline, and a refusal to recognize illegitimate authority. Again, that, 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 that is the key then, and as opposed to you know, occupying any physical space. And again, I, I want to you know, emphasize the importance of nonviolent discipline. I mean, that's critical to success of anything, uh, any, any movement like this. And, and um, when you look at U.S. history, that the, the most dramatic um, uh, nonviolent campaigns that we, we think of, the civil rights movement, the anti-nuclear power movement, things like that, that they all stress a training, nonviolence training beforehand. You know, and, and uh, we're starting to see this training workshops, which is those offered by Choose Democracy, are uh, remotely, given the, uh, the, given the circumstances of the pandemic, have been ongoing. And they're critically important and better enabling uh, participants to maintain a nonviolent meaner, demeanor in the face of pro provocations. In addition, the threat from agent provocateur and hot-headed Trump activists require training and deployment of marshals as well to enforce uh, nonviolent discipline.